Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about a spherical shell and the heat transferring from the inside to the outside. So here we have a shell with an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B with a temperature on the inside T sub A and a temperature on the outside T sub B. Assuming that the temperature is greater than the inside to the outside, heat will then flow from the inner surface to the outer surface and radiate outward. But we're concerned about the heat conduction across that hmm, spherical shell. And so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we realize that the amount of heat transferring across the shell must be constant throughout, even though the circumference gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so travel outward, the dQ dt has to be a constant. We can think of it as being a whole bunch of little shells piled on top of each other and the heat traveling through each shell must be the same. You can't have more heat traveling through one shell compared to the other shell. So we can say that dQ dt is constant and it's going to be equal to Ka times the difference in temperature divided by the length. And then if we take a small little segment of that shell with a small little uh, width dr, we can then say that the, con that the dq dt, which is constant, is equal to k times 4 pi r squared, which is the surface area of one of those shells, r being the distance from the center to the shell, times dt, a small little change in the temperature across the shell, divided by a small little distance dr, traveled from there to there. Now we have to think about it that the temperature, the dt here, is going to be a negative quantity because it's going to be warmer here than it is there. So the temperature gets to be smaller. So this is going to be a negative dt. So the amount of heat flowing out is going to be the negative of that. So we do have to plug in a negative sign in front of that. So when we come up here, we write the equation, we make sure that we have a negative sign there to compensate for the fact that dt is actually a negative quantity. And we want to think about the dq dt as being a positive quantity flowing outward. If we don't put the negative in here, we'll end up with a negative dq dt, which is okay as well. We can think of it as being a negative heat flowing out. So that's one way to think about it as well. Okay. Now, let's plug in what we know into an equation that we can integrate. In other words, we want to separate the variables. We want to put the r's on one side and the dt on the other side. Remember that this is a constant quantity, so that means that we have a dr times an r to the minus 2 power, which is equal to the negative 4 pi k times dt divided by the dq dt, which is ultimately what we're solving for, right? We want to know what dq dt is, so let's plug that in here. dq dt is equal to question mark. That's ultimately what we're trying to figure out. Okay, now we can integrate both sides. We can integrate the left side, we can integrate the right side, and so this becomes r to the negative 1 divided by negative 1, or minus 1 over r to the first power. And we're going to integrate this from A to B. The limits of integration are going to be from A to B because the inner radius is A, the outer radius is B. And then here, this is equal to minus 4 pi k times T evaluated from T on the inside to T on the outside, all divided by dQ dt. Like this. Okay, uh, let's see here. We have a negative here, a negative there. They cancel out. So we have 1 over r from a to b. So that becomes 1 over b minus 1 over a because we take the upper limit minus the lower limit. So that's the left side. We can move dq dt over here already, dq dt. And that is going to be equal to 4 pi k times tb minus ta. Now notice that tb is a smaller number than ta because it's hotter on the inside than it is on the outside. So this is actually a negative quantity here. But now here when we uh, work this out, we have a common denominator. So this becomes a minus b divided by a times b. Multiply this times dq dt, which is equal to 4 pi k times tb minus ta. Now we know that this is a negative quantity. What about this one? Well, notice that a is smaller than b because a is a smaller radius, b is a larger radius. So this is going to be a negative quantity. This is a negative quantity. If I multiply both sides by negative 1 and reverse those, I could write this as b minus a over a times b 
times dq dt is equal to 4 pi k times, and here we can write ta minus tb, which is now also a positive quantity. And finally, I can solve this for dq dt, and let me do that up here. So we can write that dq dt, the amount of heat per unit time being transferred across that shell, is going to be equal to 4 pi k times a b over b minus a. So let's write it like this, a b over b minus a. Whoop, I'll fix that in a moment. And times the quantity t a minus t b. So let's fix that here minus A, and now we have an equation that describes the heat flow across a shell, and remember that the shell gets larger in cross-sectional area, so it's not a constant path, it's, it's a path that gets wider, so to speak, so this will then be the equation we need to calculate the amount of heat transferring per unit time, which is a constant, 4 pi times the heat conductivity K, AB over B minus A, times Ta minus Tb, which is the difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside, and that's how it's done.